Hello everyone. So today we will be discussing about the applications of finite automata. That is the area of usages of finite automata. Okay. So the first one would be language processing, compiler constructions, computer networks, video games, design of digital circuits, biomedical problem solving. There are still few more fields where we will be using finite automata, but these six are the major areas of finite automata. Okay, so now let us see the brief in each area how um, finite automata is useful. First one, language processing. Language processing uh, in simple terms, uh, we can refer it as where a human will be using his words so that he can express his feelings or emotions to the opponent. Whereas when it comes to uh, computation, language processing will be completely dependent upon the machines. Okay, the input which is given by the user has to be processed by the machine. So now let us see how it is being used in our day to day basis. Okay, so the first example would be email filters. Email filters uh, are nothing but where we will be differentiating the actual that is original mails and the spam ones okay so that's uh, that is where we will be using the language processing next up smart assistants whereas uh, we have come across many smart assistants nowadays where we can use certain examples like amazon alexa microsoft's cortana or apple's siri google's google assistants so these all have evolved with the usage of language processing which is of finite automata algorithm usage okay next one is compiler construction compiler is basically an application where a high-ended programming language will be converted into a low level language like machine code okay so that the program can be executed so in com uh, in construction of those compilers we will be using the finite automata algorithms next computer networks computer networks are uh, where uh, we have come across many uh, protocols like http https ftp these protocols are being developed with the usage of finite automata next video games video games is more of creativity and complex algorithm basis rather than just programming language okay so uh, where those uh, complex algorithms are distinguished in video uh, games using the finite automata uh, example warcraft 3 which which is being developed with high end artificial intelligence technology okay next application is de design of digital circuit um we have seen many circuits usages in our day-to-day -day basis like fans, refrigerators um, or washing machi machines etc. Okay, So digital circuits where uh, we will be using in our mobiles and electronic gadgets of this time, it will be designed with the usage of finite automata. Okay? Next, biomedical problem solving. This biomedical problem solving includes x-rays, where x-rays uh, diffraction or x-ray tomography, okay? These medical-based applications will be developed with the help of finite automata, okay? So this is about the applications of finite automata. Now let us see the types of finite automata, okay? It's basically broadly classified into two types. First one is with output and next one is without output. So with output, we have further classified into two types, that is Mo machine and Mealy machine. Mo machine is uh, what in the sense where the output completely depends upon the current state, whereas Mealy machine, uh, I depends upon uh, the output depends upon two components. First one would be uh, the current state, and next one would be the values of input symbols. Okay, so that is the difference between Mo machine and Mealy machine. So in our upcoming videos we wouldn't be uh, dealing with this instead we will be concentrating more on the finite automata without outputs that is dfa nfa epsilon nfa dfa stands for deterministic finite automata nfa stands for non-deterministic finite automata epsilon nfa stands for epsilon closure non-deterministic finite automata okay so in our upcoming videos we will be uh, discussing about the detailed version of each type okay so now let us see what the first type stands okay dfa uh, as we have said uh, deterministic finite automata is the abbreviation for dfa so we will be uh, seeing the actual meaning or definition of dfa in these three points the first one is only one transition will be taking place in this deterministic finite automata that is from one state to another state 
there will be only one input symbol will be used to transfer from one state to another. In our uh, previous video, uh, while explaining some ex uh, examples, we have seen that there may be ch chances of using two or more input symbols. Okay, so whereas in DFA, it is mandatory that we have to use one input symbol for one transaction from one state to another. Okay, so this is it. So the pictorial representation is something like this and the definition goes something like this. Okay, one transition from a state on an input symbol. Okay, so, um, just like finite automata, even DFA has five tuples where uh, Q stands for finite non-empty set, uh, set of states and um, summation stands for the finite uh, non-empty set of strings or alphabets. Q0 is the start state or first state or initial state. F stands for final state or accepting states. Then uh, delta stands for the um, transition functions. So this is about the common definition of uh, deterministic finite automata. Now let us see the uh, few examples regarding DFA. Okay. So first one something is like this. Okay. Let's just solve this simple one. Show that the string 0011 is accepted by the following DFA. So this is the DFA which is already being constructed. We have to check whether this 0011 is accepted in this DFA. Okay let's let's just see so first rule of dfa is that from start state if this string goes to the final state that is after accepting all these strings if it goes to the final state then the string has been accepted or else if it is not present in the final state if in case it just returned to the first state or any other states apart from final state then we can say that that specific string is rejected okay now let us see whether this string is accepted or not the first one is as we all know we have to represent the first state and with an arrow with the first state so this is the first state so zero on accepting zero it is staying on the same state so let's just draw okay next again 0 again on accepting 0 it is say staying on the same state next on accepting 1 the this q0 state is going to q1 state on accepting 1 from q0 it is going to q1 state now you can ask me a question that it has reached the final state but as I already mentioned, it has to accept the complete string. Then only we can come to a conclusion whether the string is accepted or rejected. Okay. Now, the last string is again 1. So, in Q1, Q1, if 1 is being an input symbol, it is again repeating itself. So, you can see there are two inputs, 0 and 1. So, this has been accepted. So this is it. So you can see that from start state, it has gone to the final state without any intervention. So we can say that this 0011 string is being accepted. Okay. Next. Now let us see this example to check whether the string AABAB and BABA is accepted by the following DFA. So DFA is something like this. Okay. Let's just say how this string, string will be accepted. So first one would be A, A, B, A, B. Okay. So we have to see. Start Q0. On accepting A, let's say where it is going. It is going to Q1. On accepting A, input, where, input symbol, it is going to state Q1. Next. Again A. From Q1 on accepting A, it is staying in the same state. So Q1 itself. Next. The third one is B. It is in Q1 on accepting B, it is going to final state Q2. Okay. So next. 
on accepting A, it is going to Q1. Next, on accepting B, it is going to Q2. So, this is it. Okay. Hope you can see this A, A, B, A, B is being, you know, completely accepted by this complete DFM. That is Q0. On accepting A, it is going to Q1. On accepting A, it is going to Q1. Again, it is A. From Q1 on accepting A, it is staying on the same symbol, same, same state. Next, again, we have to check after accepting B as an input variable where it is going from Q1, it is going to Q2. Okay, so next A, from Q2 on accepting A, it is going back to Q1 state. Next, on accepting B, it is transferring from Q1 to Q2. So, you can see that from start symbol and from the start state, it has reached the final state without any intervention. Okay. So, we can say that AABAB is being accepted string. Okay. Now, the second string which goes like BABA. Let's say BABA. Okay. First state is Q0. Let's say. Let's see how it is being accepted. Q0 on accepting B, it is staying in the same state. So, on accepting B, staying in the same state. Next, Q0 on accepting A, it is going to the next state. On accepting A, it is going to the next state, Q1. Okay. Next, next is B. From Q1 on accepting B, it is going to Q2. Next, the final symbol is from Q2 on accepting A, it is going back to Q1. On accepting A, it is going back to Q1. So, you can clearly say that it is not in Q2 state. It is the non-final state. It is in, it. Uh, the string has been accepted with the non-final state. So, we can say that it is not accepted. Okay. So, this is it. So, this string is not accepted. Now, we'll see the designs of DFA. DFA designs are pattern recognition problems. The pattern recognition uh, are the system which is being used in image processing or data analysis or data manipulation. Uh, in various fields, we will be using this pattern recognition according to their usage. Okay. Next, divisible by K problems. Even this is also used with regards to latest technologies. Okay. Modulo K, counter programs. Uh, counter problems all these types are being used in different technologies which we use in our day-to-day -day lives but in the terms of algorithm okay now let us see what actually each one are in our upcoming videos now for this video we will be just discussing these steps with regards to pattern recognition okay so let's see the first five steps to convert pattern recognition problems okay first would be identify the minimum strings step 2 identify the alphabets step 3 construct a skeleton of dfa step 4 identify other transition which are not defined in step 3 okay in step 5 construct the dfa using transition in step 3 and step 4 so for this video let's just see or know what actually these five steps are in our upcoming videos we will be discussing about the problems too problems regarding pattern recognition uh, divisible by k problems modulo k problems counter problems one after the other okay thank you for watching have a good day bye bye